may I have your attention. Please welcome TechCrunch Managing Editor, Matt Burns. Thank you, I appreciate that. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Burns. Thank you so much for coming back for the last day of TechCrunch Disrupt and the final round of Startup Battlefield for 2023. I gotta take you back to yesterday. After the show ended, TechCrunch editorial staff picked the finalists and it was contentious. It got loud, people had feelings hurt, and friendships were almost lost. But together, the TechCrunch editorial senior staff narrowed it down to six different companies. These companies you've already seen. They presented within the last two days, but they're back to a whole new panel of judges. They're gonna have six minutes to present, and they're gonna get eight minutes of questions from the, the judges. Expect deeper questions, more thoughtful questions as well, too, as we go forward, because we want to dive deep into these companies' history and their future as well. The companies are competing for a $100,000 check from TechCrunch to them. There's no equity taken. We don't charge a fee for this. This is a, a prize that we'd love to give out to companies, and we'd love to see pictures of this giant check making its way down Market Street in San Francisco and through airports around the world. So with that, I'm gonna bring out the judges, and we're gonna get going. So judges, come on out. You know this drill, I have to read some bios now. Okay, starting next to me, right to my, my left, is, Ham is Mamoon Hamid. He's partner at Kleiner Perkins. He's been an early stage investor in and served on the boards of some of the most innovative software companies of recent times, including Box, Figma, Intercom, Netscope, Slack, and Yammer. Prior to joining Kleiner Perkins, Hamid was a co-founder of Social Capital, and prior to that, a partner at US Venture Partners. Next to him is Mar Hershenson, founding partner of Pair VC. Mar has a, earned a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford University and developed groundbreaking techniques of optimizing the analog semiconductors. Since then, she's accrued 13 years of founder experience, co-founded three startups in mobile e-commerce, enterprise software, and semiconductor industries, and has registered 14 separate patents. As Pair's co-founder and managing partner, Mar brings operational and technical expertise to the investment team. Next to her is Charles Hudson, founder and managing partner of Precursor Ventures. Precursor is an early stage venture capital firm focusing on investing in the first institutional round of investments for the most promising software and hardware companies. Prior to founding Precursor Ventures, Charles was partner at SoftTech VC. In this role, he focused on identifying investment opportunities in mobile infrastructure, mobile applications, and marketplace. Next to him is Marissa Mayer. Marissa is the CEO and co-founder of Sunshine, a startup building smart everyday apps to help manage your relationships and free up your time. Previously, Marissa was a CEO of Yahoo, where she led a transformation of the company, rejuvenating its culture, growing to more than 1 billion users worldwide, and reinventing Yahoo's business. Marissa also spent 13 years at Google as an early employee and the first woman engineer. For more than a decade, she led product management for Google Search, Google Maps, Google News, and other products. Next to her is Matthew Panzerino. He's been a professional photographer and media founder, served as the managing editor for The Next Web, and most recently, the editor-in-chief of TechCrunch, where he served as lead editor for the last 10 years, which meant for the last 10 years, he's my boss and now he's leaving. I want to thank you, Matthew, from the bottom of my heart for your opportunities, your grace, and your understanding of my expense reports. Thank you so much. <laughs> Last, we have Dana Settle. Dana is a co-founder and managing partner at Graycroft. As a member of Graycroft's management team committee, she was responsible for the firm's operations, investment strategy, and vision. Dana is on the investment committee for all of Graycroft's funds and has been involved in all phases of their growth. Prior to Graycroft, Dana spent several years as a venture capitalist and advisor to startups in the Bay Area, including six years at Mayfield and investment banking at Lehman Brothers. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna bring out the first company. And again, like every other day, I need you to bring the energy, clap them out with nice, strong energy, and then we'll get going. So from LA, California, Parallel Health. Presenting for Parallel Health is Nathan Brown and Natalie Robinson. Give them a round of applause. 
My name is Natalie Kalea Robinson, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Parallel Health. In the world of precision health, I don't follow trends, I set them. You've likely all taken antibiotics at least once in your life. Strep throat, stomach infections, skin issues. Antibiotics have saved our lives, full stop. But we also know that taking too many antibiotics can pose a danger to our health because of side effects and antimicrobial resistance. The World Health Organization says that antimicrobial resistance is a top 10 global health threat to humanity, and by 2050, over 10 million people will die from an antibiotic-resistant infection. Enter Parallel, a precision phage platform utilizing testing with whole genome sequencing, robotics, automation, and big data machine learning and AI. Phages are microbes that infect bacteria. They're like antibiotics, except they're natural and they're targeted. They're like precise assassins that kill the bad bacteria, but leave the good bacteria alone. Phages were discovered in the early 1900s, and scientists and doctors used them to treat illnesses like cholera and dysentery. But they didn't have the sequencing technology that we have today. And in the 1920s, we, the Western world, found antibiotics, and they were effective. They killed everything, and they were cheap to produce. So we left phage therapy behind. But with the rise of antimicrobial resistance, scientists like those at Parallel have used phage therapy to save lives under the FDA's emergency use authorization. Today, Parallel has developed a platform that covers and, and applies to other areas of human health. We're starting in skin. Why? Dermatologists are the number one prescribers of antibiotics across healthcare. I met my now co-founder, Dr. Nathan Brown, at a skincare startup where we both worked, and we brought to market the first ever phage-based serum targeting C. acnes bacteria for acne. And here's what we learned. In a certain cohort of people, it worked tremendously well. We were able to get people off of antibiotics and Accutane, and yet in another cohort, it didn't hurt them, just nothing happened. And so to understand this discrepancy, we sequenced their skin microbiome, and we learned that in this first cohort, these people had an overgrowth of C. acnes, which completely made sense because our serum was targeting C. acnes. And in the other cohort, these people had an overgrowth of other types of bacteria, Pseudomonas, S. aureus, sometimes it was fungi or even mites. And we realized that if we were going to bring a precision solution to the market like phage, then we were going to have to have a test and a ton of data. So we joined the Illumina Accelerator, where we amassed the largest database on the skin microbiome to date using whole genome sequencing. Today, I'd like to introduce our skin microbiome discovery kit and our custom phage serums. Let's pan to the kiosk where we can see Katie and show you how this works. Here is our skin microbiome discovery kit. Unlike others who have only one swab, we have four swabs. It turns out your forehead microbiome might be different than your chin microbiome. We also include a control to control for microbes in the room. Once Katie's done swabbing, she's going to send those back to our lab. Let's go to our Zoom live feed. Here, we use automation and robotics to prep the sample, and then we sequence. Unlike others who use a technology called 16S, we use a more advanced technology called whole genome sequencing that allows us to see not only bacteria, but also viruses, fungi, and even mites. We then use a, an internal spike to be quantitative and then unique bioalgorithms to categorize your skin microbiome type. Our test is so thorough that we can see when you have antibiotic resistance genes or even viruses that have been correlated with non-melanoma skin cancer. We can't report on those results just yet, but here's what we can tell you. Let's go to demo. Here we can see Katie's results. You can see her skin microbiome type, her skin age, her diversity score, hydration levels, an outline of good and bad bacteria, as well as recommendations on food and skincare ingredients, and of course, her phage serum. Let's go back to presentation. Parallel has defined eight different skin microbiome types and eight different phage formulations. Parallel 
produces its phages by leveraging our proprietary biobanks of over 10,000 bacterial, phage, and fungal strains, and then use high throughput screening to select the right phages. Let's go back to the live feed. Here we use bioreactors to produce and scale the phages at extremely high titer, which allows us to achieve and maintain efficacy. Let's go back to presentation. We have a wait list of over 6,000 people to date, five patents, and an LOI from a Fortune 500 company to develop novel ingredients. When scaled beyond skin to other areas of human health in therapeutics, Parallel projects revenue potential of over $5 billion in 2030. Parallel's team features world-class experts across science, medicine, big data, AI, engineering, and business. We're launching an exclusive preview here at TechCrunch this week. Please visit, it. Please visit us at parallelhealth.io where you can biohack your skin. Thank you. OK, Dana, let's start with you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, great, great presentation, and it's an exciting uh, area for sure, and I think your timing is terrific. Um, I'm curious, though, just in terms of the model, because I think you know, you're, you're launching your first product. Is the plan that you will exclusively launch your own products, or will you be enabling um, or ingredients in sort of other products? Both, actually. So we made a strategic decision in the future that we needed a lot of data, right? So we wanted to go, and we had a compelling product to offer to the market. So we're going direct to patient and consumer. However, we have been approached by CPG companies to develop novel ingredients, so, and we have the ability to do that, so we're doing that as well. It's a lot to, I mean, as a startup, it's a lot to take on. That's why I'm just, I was curious, you know, sort of where you're really going to be focusing your, your energy. So primarily on your own products? Primarily, the, yeah. okay. primarily now, yes. Got it. But in the future, we see um, other lines of revenue. Terrific. Mark? Yeah, I'm trying to understand if this will be a cosmetic or a therapeutic. Like, I, I think Accutane is really effective and also really cheap if you get reimbursed. Is this, are you guys going that route or is it going cosmetic route? And if it is, then what is the cost out of pocket for folks to do this? Yes, so currently we are a cosmetic test okay. as well as cosmetic serum, so skincare. But we've, we've been led by the data and we absolutely see clinical applications in the data that we're seeing, as I mentioned, we see antibiotic resistance genes and bacteria, viruses that have been associated with non-melanoma skin cancer. So all of this data really points to therapeutic applications and clinical applications in the future, which we're working towards. In terms of the question around uh, cost to consumers, we have a starter kit that includes the test and your first serum. Uh, it starts at $385. Um, but we are working on a subscription model where you're paying 150 to let's say $200 a month where then testing is included. And we wanted to, to work towards that. Well, one good question, what's the margin on that? Because you have to do the testing. I, I, don't, I mean, I know it's gonna come down in price, but That's right. if yeah, you're mar charging that, how much? Yeah, the margins on the test are fairly slim. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but you know, we're trying to get to about 30 to 50% depending on volume, um, but the margins on the skincare are typical sort of skincare margins yeah. okay. um, that are quite high. Charles? Uh, do you one more, Mark? It's okay, I'll, I'll do it later. Can you, can you talk <laughs> just about the state of the technology around sequencing and the formulation and like how much more R&D you, you feel like you need to do there to get to commercialization? Sure. Yeah, I think we're ready to launch. So we're gonna launch after this, uh, this event. And um, uh, really, the, the, the sequencing is the enabling technology for phage therapy, and it's already there. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really uh, driven or enabled this is, is, is the decrease in cost, uh, thanks to Illumina and other companies. So, so that's ready. Um, and you can really get precise um, idea of what's on someone's skin microbiome with that technology already. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've really focused on producing the phage and getting those scaled up. That's a major challenge that we've overcome, mm -hmm. and, and we're ready now to launch. Thank you. Momo? Yeah, as a direct-to-consumer business, how do you intend on getting distribution for your products? So currently, of course, direct on website um, through Amazon as well, but we are putting together pilot programs with estheticians, med spas, derm clinics who have shown interest um, in various cities across the, 
the U.S. to start, but we are looking at that sort of B to B to C model as well. Bar, I have a quick question. Do you know how much are the sales of Accutane in the U.S. yearly? That I don't a, know. I don't have my phone. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a great question. I don't know what it's at currently today. Okay. Um, I think it's also muddied by sort of reimbursement as well. So, but you could take that money <laughs> at some sure. point. Right. Sure. I mean, we've, we've seen results where people have been able okay. to get off of Accutane, and so that, um, that was really inspiring to us as a cosmetic product. Okay. Marissa? Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the technology behind the production of the phages, because obviously there's a lot of technology around antibiotics. Um, how well does that transfer to you? Is it totally different, and what some of the constraints of production look like? Yeah, that's a, an important question for us. It's been a major focus. Um, we use a bioreactor, as you saw. Uh, that technology is established. Um, the processes for phage are different. So the phage grow as the bacteria grow. So it's two dynamic processes you have to manage. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, advisors who have been working on this for 20 years. I've got four years of experience. It is distinct from a small molecule manufacturing process, but it uses some of the same tools. So um, the technology is there. Uh, we've developed the processes in-house, and that's part of our IP is, is the the secret sauce behind manufacturing. Matthew? Yeah, I was just curious, the, the, on the IP front, um, which is always, it's always nice uh, to have something that nobody else has, uh, <laughs> what, how much of it is manufacturing? How much of it is in the serum? Uh, can you describe like, kind of the rough shape of those patents? Yeah, so there's a few areas that we patent. One is the, uh, um, uh, the formulation itself of the phages. Now, phages are natural products. You can't patent them, but you can pa uh, patent how you stabilize them. So our products are room temperature stable for months. This is what we would need to go to a CPG partner, and this is what the consumer wants on their shelf. You don't want to pull it out of the fridge. I don't, anyhow. So um, that's patentable. Um, as well as some of the processes, we can set up some pickets around the processes. Um, and we've been encouraged to do that, especially if you go into therapeutics. That's done quite often. Um, so those are some main areas that we, that we focus on patenting. In addition, if we do go therapeutic, which we are actively working on at the moment, uh, the, there's genetic engineering technology that we can introduce, and we have patented some um, novel genetic sequences for, for, for the, the, the phages we're developing for therapeutics. Um, so that's another aspect, another, another um, moat, IP moat we can, besides branding, which, you know, is all important. Right? Sure. So. Thank you. Go to Mar and then Amu. You can go first. Okay. I think I've been. <laughs> All right. Uh, could you talk about the capital needs and the capital intensity to scale up production of the first product? So as Nathan mentioned, we're, we're there. Um, so to date, we've raised $2.3 million. Uh, we're looking for an additional, um, at a minimum, $2 million currently on a safe, and we're raising that. Um, now, obviously, if we go into, uh, I'll say when we go into therapeutics um, or clinical applications, we'll obviously have to raise a lot more. And, and how much of that goes towards just the equipment required to the robotics the actually uh, to make the products? So we've um, outlaid some of those expenses already. Um, so I'd say, so of that 2.3 million we've already raised, the vast majority has gone into the technology and R&D. Um, but luckily, um, you know, as we scale, it'll um, decrease in, in costs. We have 30 seconds left, and Mara has one more question. Okay, my question is, you guys are so technical, so many patents, and part of the challenge of a company like yours is you have to go buy customers, right? And acquiring is so expensive. You're probably going to need more than $2 million to do that. Why not, like Dana said, license your tech to other people that already have brand and access to those customers? You know, you made me a more profitable business. Like, wh what was the reasoning behind that? It's a fair question. Um, and and to, to be fair, I think when we first started, we didn't think we were going to go into licensing, but we were approached by the CPG company. So we said, great, we'll do that too. Yeah, let the market speak. <laughs> <laughs> but I think microbiome and what we're introducing in terms of phage is so novel that there is a component of education that we have to do with the consumer. Um, people know, generally have heard about the microbiome, but I, I think it's really advantageous for us to be able to create content and share the value of, of microbiome and personalization. To I market. would just tell you it's so expensive to educate the consumer that you really want to rely on other folks to help you. 
That's, you're right. No, you know, no, you're right. We're, we're going to leave it on that advice for all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Give them a round of applause. I appreciate it.